Buhari was the governor of the northeastern state, which comprises the present day Borno, Yobe, Adamawa, Gombe, Bauchi, and Taraba states. Buhari's Supreme Military Council, January 1984. The makeup of Buhari's Supreme Military Council troubled Southerners. Virtually all of the senior positions in the Supreme Military Council were occupied by Northern Muslims. Of the 16 members of Buhari's ruling Supreme Military Council, 11 were from the North, while 5 came from the South, with only Commodore Ebitu Ukiwe representing the Southeast and Brigadier Ola Oni from Lagos, who represented the Southwest. Felia Nicola Pakote wondered why Sheu Shagari was not put on trial by Buhari. Neither was any of the Muslim Northern governors of the ruling National Party of Nigeria (NPN), except Ape Aku of Benue State, who was a Christian. But governors of the Christian South and other public office holders were jailed. In his inimitable parlance, Fela said. Driver get accident. Now conductor Buhari charge go court. Under Buhari's regime, anyone could be detained at his whim using draconian decrees. The list of those incarcerated under Buhari's regime is lengthy. Sam Mbakwe, Fela Kote, Femi Aribisala, Bisi Omobanjo, Bolaige, Aoudou Obe, and so many others. Individual security was so bad under Buhari that when Pa Adekunle Ajashi was acquitted twice by courts that found him not guilty of Buhari's accusation of corruption, the Buhari regime rearrested and detained him under Decree No. 2. While Buhari detained Taishulari and denied him medication, even while Tai Sholari was having persistent asthmatic attacks. Specifically, due to his criticisms of the successful military administrations, he incurred the wrath of the Buhari regime and became a victim of its much dreaded state security detention of persons decree number no. 2 of 1984. Disturbed by the violation of his fundamental human rights, Sholari, through his lawyer, Dr. Ulu Onaburua, filed a writ of habeas corpus at the Lagos High Court seeking the detainee's production in court and Sholarin's subsequent release. The court ruled in Sholarin's favor, and by this ruling, the court invalidated the detention order under which Sholarin was incarcerated. When Buhari took over, he detained Bisio Nobanjo of Ogun State. Kayade Latif Jakonde, aka Babake Kere of Lagos State, Sam Mbakwe, Imo State, Ape Aku, Benue State, and Professor Ambrosali of the defunct Bende State, now Edo and Deta States. These were men who were regarded as arguably the best performing governors of the Second Republic. Oleye Victor Olabisi Nobanjo was known as an unpretentious and plain speaking man and his administration of Ogun State was considered a model at the time and later. On May 13, 1982, he commissioned Ogun Television. The Ogun State University, founded on the 7th of July 1982, was now renamed Olabisi or Nobanjo University on May 29, 2001 in his memory. He also established the Abraham Adesoya Polytechnic. He was in prison for 20 months, and he did not last long after release from Buhari's Gulag, for he died shortly after. These men were plagued by terrible diseases while in prison. Ambrosali of Edo State, the late Governor Ape Aku of Benue State, the late Bisio Nobanjo of Ogun State. Professor Ambros Ali and Samuel Bakwe died prematurely. Ambos Ali came out of Buhari's prison blind. Ambos Ali was so poor that the Edo state government had to build him a befitting house after his death so as to hold a decent burial. 
General Buhari impounded the official passport of Papa Obafemi Awolowo and denied the old man visits to his doctors at Mayo Clinic, Royster, Minnesota, United States of America, for the years he ruled Nigeria. Papa Awolowo's passport was only returned to him with courtesies by General Ibrahim Babangida after the coup of 1985 that had ousted Buhari from power. Babangida sent Lieutenant General Aliyu Muhammad Kusau to return Baba's passport with apologies from the Nigerian Armed Forces. All these bring to mind the satirical song of Yubatu Gunde in the mid-60s, where similar incidents plagued the Nigerian political landscape. The years of the wild, wide west. Try as much as the military dictatorship of General Muhammad de Buhari did to rope him for alleged corruption, which were never substantiated, Ekwene came out as white as snow. In fact, he spent the entire years of the Buhari regime in prison, but was never one day charged before a law court or a tribunal. Though he was under prison custody at Kirikiri for 20 months, the Buhari regime could not find one shred of evidence of corruption to nail Ekweme. When he turned 80 years in 2012, Dr. Alex Ifine Chuku Ekweme gave a thought-provoking interview. He was arrested and detained on the night of the coup by Buhari. During this interview encounter, Ekweme declared, after the Buhari regime put me in prison for serving my country so selflessly, I felt Nigeria was not worth dying for or sacrificing for. First, I was locked up in Boni Camp, Lagos. From there, I was moved to Kirikiri Maximum Security Prison. When I was locked up in Kirikiri in January 1984, in February, this same Buhari, who was president of Nigeria, go unelected. Called a press conference and said that I, Alex Ekweme, was responsible for all the corruption in government. That I was in charge of petroleum. First, I had nothing to do with petroleum. The minister of petroleum in our time was the president, like in Abacha's time. And the special advisor on petroleum was Yayadiko. Buhari cannot even get one evidence to support what he was saying because they were lies. Blantant lies. It is curious that why Ekwene, the incorruptible vice, was in prison for 20 months. His boss, President Shagari, whose failure led to the coup, was kept in the presidential palace in Ikoi. In 1983-84, Buhari protected Anwar Ibrahim, the MPN Ninja State Governor, who was arrested in Heathrow Airport in London with 14 million pounds sterling and several millions of naira and dollars. He was never persecuted. Buhari protected Sheo Kangiwa, MPN Sokoto State Governor who conducted and supervised the famous Bakulori massacre of poor peasant farmers whose lands were appropriated without compensation. Ironically, Ayo Jeremy and Professor Ambuzali, the European Governor of Bender State, came out of prison blind as a result of imprisonment on false charges by Buhari. Buhari engineered the scrapping of one of the f most foresighted policies of the UPN Latif Jaconde led civilian government of Lagos State when he took over, which was the desire to improve transportation in Lagos and regenerate the city, which was the federal capital at the time. In 1982, the Jaconde government signed a $700 million contract for the Metroland project with a French consortium comprising of about 19 firms. The Labour State Government was required to pay only 10% of this money, while the balance was to be paid by the consortium. 
but Buhari scrapped the project and Nigeria forfeited $60 million already deposited for the project. Even worse, Buhari ordered the judicial murder of Bernardo Gedegui, who was sentenced to death under Decree 20 for a crime he committed before Decree 20 was enacted, whereas he carried a lighter sentence when he committed the crime. Buhari refused to accept any pleas to spare Ogindegui's life. Hence, under Buhari, the state denies the individual his life at the whim of General Buhari. To summarize the state of security under Buhari's regime, Professor Wale Shoinka expressed shock that any Nigerian would ever contemplate voting for Buhari as a president. According to Shoinka, unquote, Buhari enslaved the nation. He gloated and glorified in a master slave relationship to the millions of his inhabitants. It is astonishing to find that the same former slaves, now free of their chains, should clamor to be ruled by one who not only turned their nation into a slave plantation, but forbade them any discussion of their condition. Unquote.